All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, this is a flow seminar where flow stands for Federated 91 War Seminar. And it was a seminar created for the dissemination of latest scientific research results in all aspects of federated learning. My name is Samuel Horvat, and together with Peter Richter, Virginia Smith, Avrilene Bellat, and Dan Alistair, we are the organizers of this seminar. Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker, Anastasia Koloskova. So she's a PhD student at EPFL working under supervision of Professor Martin Yagi. And she's an expert on decentralized optimization. And this is also a topic of her today's talk. And thank you, Anastasia, for agreeing to giving this talk. And please go ahead. Yeah, hello, everyone. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for inviting uh, me to present uh, uh, here uh, in the seminar. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, let me start. Okay, so so uh, today uh, I wanted to talk about a uh, uh, couple of uh, topics, uh, like our like work on uh, unified uh, and improved analysis of decentralized algorithms for machine learning. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start uh, with setting. Uh, so uh, setting we consider is this uh, distributed optimization. Uh, so this means what uh, we have several devices. Of workers and uh, every worker could have its own local data set, DI, and uh, uh, and uh, based on this uh, local data set, DI, uh, every every worker has its own local loss function, FI, and the goal uh, of this distributed optimization is to find one model which is good uh, for all the data. Uh, so basically, so if you have so, so if you define fi is a loss function based on local data points, then the goal of uh, uh, this optimization, uh, it, like uh, of this problem, is to find the minimum of like the joint uh, loss function, like which is like the average of all uh, local local loss functions uh, fi's, um, and uh, yeah, and uh, so, 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 okay, so. Uh, Applications. Uh, so, so where is this? Where where this could be used? Uh, like first is uh, training in the data centers. Uh, like when uh, each uh, worker would represent several GPU, uh, typically on the same server. And uh, so this and usually uh, in this setup uh, we have access to uh, uh, joint data set, like to to some shared uh, data set. Uh, and this means what each local functions are usually the same because they can access all the data points uh, in the data set. And uh, in our application is federated learning. And here, uh, you, you, like you, you, every device represents like every, like every worker represents a separate device. And uh, this like separate device has its own local data historically based on like uh, like originated on this device for example uh, the task could be uh, to learn uh, some language model uh, based on the text which you write on your mobile phone uh, or like for example in hospitals like every hospital has its own uh, clients its its own patients and this could be some patient data of this hospital and you like keep this data private to the uh, to the hospital uh, and uh, okay, so so uh, in this uh, distribu uh, distributed optimization, you could implement it uh, in different ways, and it's orthogonal to applications uh, which you saw before. So one of uh, so so this is like technical uh, details. So one of uh, ways how can you implement it is to use some central server. So this means what? Okay, so you have like several devices or like uh, GPUs, and uh, they can perfectly so so there is like some central entity and they can perfectly communicate uh, to this central server uh, which keeps track of uh, all the updates and uh, another way is to have this decentralized uh, way uh, decentralized communications and uh, here you have no center and uh, you have like uh, separate workers and uh, uh, like there is like and every worker would keep like its own local uh, model and uh, communication so so you have some underlying graph and communication allowed it uh, uh, only by the edges of this graph so you allowed it only point to point communications uh, here 
and the advantages is uh, you could have like no central point of failure if it's important. Uh, so like local communications, uh, you don't need, uh, not everyone to everyone uh, has to communicate. Then uh, you can also, if you don't trust the center, you can also decide uh, to whom you want to communicate yourself. Uh, okay, so, uh, so let's uh, uh, take one step uh, back and look at a bit different problem, uh, which is averaging problem. Uh, like distributed averaging. So we have uh, uh, a problem, and so this this problem uh, is a building block of the all, all like all the centralized and decentralized algorithms, uh, and it's important. So we have like several nodes, and every node has its own uh, local uh, uh, model, uh, so 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 some vector. And uh, okay, so so if there are some questions, uh, feel free to ask and interrupt me. At any point, okay. So, okay. So every node has uh, its own vector, and uh, so the goal is to find the average all these vectors uh, uh, distributedly stored uh, on uh, different nodes. So, if we have uh, centralized communications, uh, we can perform this uh, averaging very simply in one step. So everyone would send to the center like this vector, and center would average these vectors and send it back. So in centralized, there is no problem. And then decentralized, it's a bit more uh, like uh, different. It's not as simple. So, so first, let's define mathematically uh, decentralized topology. So assume we have some graph uh, con connecting, uh, like communication graph, uh, which we want, want to use. And uh, so for each edge of this graph, we assign some weight, wij, and uh, we like this way we form this uh, weighted adjustment matrix W. Okay, and like it, you, your weight would be zero if your nodes are disconnected and it has to satisfy some properties, uh, symmetricity and uh, double stochasticity. Uh, okay, and uh, so when, if you, okay, you, we define this uh, mixing matrix and then uh, if we have this decentralized topology to perform to find this average, to perform averaging uh, over it, uh, we, we can do the following. So each uh, node would send its own vector to neighbors. And uh, when they would receive from neighbors uh, the vectors, and when they would, uh, what they receive from neighbors, they would average uh, with this weight, wij, which we assigned uh, before. So, so that's why there is uh, this double stochasticity property. Why, that's why it's important because uh, this weight uh, has to be averaging weights. Okay, and uh, so like for, uh, uh, it, it's just simple, like uh, to simplify a bit notation, uh, we can use this matrix notation, uh, basically where like we have stack of, like ma this matrix X is stack of all lo local vectors. And when averaging step is uh, very simple, it's just matrix matrix multiplication. Uh, Okay, so, so uh, and what guarantees uh, for this step do we have? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we have this uh, uh, averaging uh, operator. Uh, so, 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 so in this matrix notation, uh, so here uh, as a reminder. And uh, so, so, okay, so what uh, we should uh, have uh, is uh, what after averaging, uh, our, after our decentralized averaging, if we compare to the true average vector, so our distance should decrease. Uh, and uh, so you can, uh, so, so and here it decreases uh, linearly uh, with this parameter P. And uh, uh, in connection, so, so if you have like fixed matrix W, uh, these are eigenvalues of this uh, matrix W, when this p is uh, connected to like to, to eigenvalues, it's basically uh, all like it's connected to the spectral gap of matrix W. And okay, so so some intuition. Uh, so if you have fully connected topology, uh, when you recover centralized averaging, you perform exact averaging in one step, and when p is equal to one, so your distance decreases to zero immediately. And if you have disconnected topology, you don't perform any averaging. So your p is equal to zero, your distance does not change. Uh, okay, so this is uh, assumption. Okay, and now let's uh, go to uh, 
our original task is to, to find, to solve, to optimize the like machine learning model to find an optimum of this function. And uh, okay, so as a reminder, uh, people usually use the stochastic gradient descent. And uh, so this is, uh, let's denote this as a stochastic gradient. And uh, when stochastic gradient descent has this form. So you just iterate uh, uh, over stochastic gradients. And uh, okay, so if you want to use centralized uh, HGD, so you have like, uh, so these are stochastic gradients uh, locally on every node when you just average them uh, in a centralized way and when you perform uh, SGD step, it, it's called mini batch SGD. Okay, and for decentralized uh, uh, topology, we exist uh, this algorithm. Uh, so so algorithm, like one of the algorithms to do that is this uh, decentralized SGD, where basically uh, every node locally first perform this stochastic gradient descent update. And when the average uh, over decentralized uh, topology, uh, these uh, like uh, updated models. Uh, so, so like this averaging is like exactly the same as we just discussed. Uh, okay, and uh, so so if you so if here you uh, use this uh, fully connected graph, then you would recover. Uh, uh, centralized algorithm. So, so you would, so this algorithm would be exactly equivalent to this uh, centralized uh, mini batch uh, Okay, so is there some questions so far? Uh, no, uh, so there are no questions so far. I'll let you know when some people talk. Ah, okay, okay, sounds great. Uh, thanks. Uh, okay, so. Um, so like so 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 now you you saw this centralized and decentralized uh, algorithms are quite similar, okay. And uh, what we propose uh, so 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 we proposed uh, some unified framework uh, for these distributed algorithms, and uh, uh, let's call it unified decentralized HD. And uh, so this unified framework is uh, very similar to actually a standard decentralized algorithm. Uh, so as you can see, uh, so, so first, like every uh, node uh, performs locally stochastic gradient descent updates, uh, similar as, uh, very similar as before. And uh, next, they also perform like averaging, uh, decentralized averaging. And like what, what we allow in this framework is uh, like the difference is what this matrix W can change at uh, every time. And uh, it can be also, it does not have to be deterministic. You can just sample some edges from some distribution. Uh, so it could be a, a like a stochastic matrix W. Okay, and uh, so now to get, uh, now if we want to use this framework, we need to have, to, to achieve conversions, we need to have some assumptions on this, uh, weights W, we change because as you saw, if it's like disconnected graph, you don't obtain average, so you cannot hope to converge. So some assumptions are needed. Okay, so first it has to be doubly stochastic uh, as before. So every matrix W uh, has to be doubly stochastic. And uh, next, uh, uh, so what we assume, so we could assume what every matrix W uh, brings us to uh, closer to average, but it would be too uh, much actually. And what we uh, do here is different. So, so we look uh, on combination of uh, every tau steps of averaging. So, so uh, like as a reminder, this uh, like multiplication of this matrix W is just means what we can like we apply first matrix W zero to average when matrix W one to average uh, due to, and so on. So it's a consecutive uh, application of these averaging steps. And so, so what we need is, uh, so what every, we, we don't need what every, every individual matrix uh, brings uh, us closer to the average, uh, but what we need is what combination of every tau steps brings uh, closer to the average. 
basically, so if we define uh, this W L tau as uh, this matrix of T tau consecutive uh, averaging steps, then uh, only uh, only after tau steps uh, we need to uh, become closer to original to closer to the average. Um, Okay, and so for example, uh, this would allow uh, to have this uh, decentralized local SGD where you use disconnected matrix for tau minus one step and only on the tau step, you average with matrix W. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, and so, so, so in our paper, so, so, we, so, so this is based like on one of our papers. And uh, so we prove uh, conversions rates uh, for this uh, unified framework. Uh, um, and we prove it uh, in like strongly convex, convex and non-convex cases. You can find it uh, in the paper. And here on the slides, I just put a strongly convex case uh, for simplicity. Uh, so uh, what you can see uh, here is, uh, Okay, so, so, so let, let's uh, define some parameters. Uh, so sigma, okay, so it's like functions has to be strongly convex and smooth. And uh, second, we define, so this is sigma denotes uh, stochastic noise uh, of uh, stochastic gradients. And it's only within the node, like compared to like local function. Uh, and when zeta is uh, norm of gradients at the global optimum, and uh, it, it uh, it defines uh, function dissimilarity. For example, if all the functions would be equal, uh, then global optimum would be local optimum because they're equal and this would be zero. And this is like one way to measure how different uh, functions on different nodes are. Okay, and so what we can see here, so, so there are like three terms uh, in this conversion rate. So first one is the stochastic noise. Term is like we have uh, sigma squared divided by number of nodes and t. Okay, so so this uh, convergence rate is uh, uh, how how small is your function would be after t iterations uh, of the algorithm. So t big, big t is a number of iterations here. And uh, so first we have the stochastic noise term where uh, stochastic noise is divided by n, and uh, we have it in like all these mini batch HGD algorithms. Uh, and uh, okay, so next we have uh, this middle term and it depends on uh, also on stochastic noise, but also on this function uh, dissimilarity. So, and, and on this graph topology P or like mixing property of uh, graphs P. And last is this exponential decrease term uh, where if you are sigma, if you have no stochastic noise and your functions are the same on every node, when your algorithm uh, converges linearly. Uh, okay, but also, so, so what you can note here is what uh, even when stochastic noise is, is zero, uh, this class of algorithms, so, so you don't converge linearly because of this uh, function dissimilarity zeta. Okay, and we also prove a lower bound, what this z middle term zeta is actually necessary uh, for some graphs at least. Uh, so, so you cannot remove it uh, from conversions rate. <clears throat> okay, and so, so now let's look at uh, some uh, special cases uh, which could be covered in this framework. Uh, first is uh, uh, local SGD. So this algorithm uh, is popular in federated learning, maybe like, a, like some variations or some variations of this algorithm. Uh, where you don't do any communications for tau or like for tau minus one steps, and you just use local computations. And this would mean what uh, our matrix W is identity. And uh, at tau, every tau steps, uh, you communicate uh, the fully connected uh, topology. Uh, um, so, so, and it's uh, corresponds to the centralized all dollar aggregation. Uh, so, and uh, our rates, uh, uh, in this case, uh, our rates uh, uh, like recovers, uh, like, so, okay, so at that time, at the time of a paper, we would recover and improve, uh, like, all, like in all cases, uh, I think now for strongly convex case, we're slightly uh, better, uh, but in like, 
uh, Vic, in like general convex and in non-convex, uh, I think it's still uh, like uh, optimal rate, like best rate, like for spe specific to this algorithm, of course. Uh, okay, so uh, in our, uh, it's just standard decentralized SUD where you use a fixed matrix uh, at every iteration. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and okay, so here uh, our rates also like recovers and improve all the previous results uh, in like in, in, in all the cases, uh, like, okay. And uh, so in our uh, alg like algorithm you can express here is decentralized SUD with local uh, communications, which is uh, very similar to local SUD where you don't communicate at all. And every tau steps you communicate with matrix W, which is fixed. Um, Okay, so and so okay, so 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 there are many algorithms you can express. In our one, also a bit popular maybe, is uh, pairwise uh, gossip. Here, actually, at every iteration, so what you do, you just sample one edge at every iteration, and you average uh, only over this edge, like with like weights half. So so like just one node sends to another node uh, updated vector, and no no other nodes like no one else communicates basically. And you do this at every step. You just sample different age uniformly at random. And uh, so you would, uh, so at every step, there is no, uh, you have no uh, decrease, but in expectation, you have, uh, like you sample every age uh, with the same probability. And uh, okay, so you can also prove some convergence rates uh, for this algorithm. Uh, and and you can combine, uh, you can have like all the possible combinations of like sampling different graphs or like changing graphs uh, as soon as it satisfies like original assumption. Uh, so then you can use this framework and get the uh, convergence rates. Also, maybe uh, another uh, special case is, is if you have over parameterized regime. So like. Uh, this, like so, so, so if your like model has like a big capacity and you can fit every data point perfectly, it would mean uh, what uh, you have gradients at the optimum which are equal to zero. And this would mean like because we, we used this oh, because we use this definition, uh, so sigma is just at the optimum noise and zeta is also at the optimum uh, gradients at the optimum. This means this would mean what sigma and zeta would be equal to zero, and you recover linear conversions. Okay, so okay, so this is in strongly convex case. You recover linear conversions. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so as a summary of this uh, first part, uh, uh, so uh, we presented this unified framework and it unifies uh, like centralized algorithms and decentralized algorithms. And so you can see like what you can view actually like some decentralized algorithm, something in between of having completely local steps and uh, fully uh, full communication. So we also derive theoretical conversions rate uh, and uh, which uh, takes into account uh, this heterogeneous data uh, and this rate uh, recovers and improves uh, previous results. And uh, we also uh, provided lower bound, which says what uh, for these algorithms, you cannot remove this uh, heterogeneity term, but only in the strongly convex case, but uh, it should hold in all our uh, cases as well. Okay, and also all over this uh, framework, uh, unifies uh, with decentralized and centralized algorithms. Still, uh, it's not like answer to all the questions. It's a, this decentralized framework could be limiting. For example, uh, in federated learning, it's usually uh, common to use uh, different step sizes for local, uh, for, for like inner steps, locally on every worker and for global step. Uh, so we, and you cannot express it in this framework. So, so like this framework could be limiting depending on uh, what you want. Okay, so uh, so maybe it's a good uh, point to pause a little bit and uh, if someone has questions. Uh. There is already one question in the chat, so I'll try to unmute Mark. So Mark, please go ahead. Uh. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, 
I have a question now when you say the decentralized node communication yep. uh, with other, do they send only the gradient or also they will send their data? Uh, okay, so uh, we don't send data and we don't send gradient. Uh, okay, let's go back. Okay, so you have this uh, decentralized uh, algorithm, right? And uh, so, so what we do is uh, we update, we, so, so everyone has local model XI, so every node I, and uh, everyone uh, computes with uh, local uh, SGT step. And what we send is with updated models. Uh, so we send the full model to the neighbors. Uh, so. Oh, so the whole model will be sent to the neighbors. Yes, exactly. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. But you, you don't communicate uh, data and yeah, you don't communicate guidance, but you communicate models. Yes. I see. Thank you. Okay, are there more questions? Yes, there is one other question that just popped up in the chat. It's from you, Gesualdo. Uh, ah, can I can I ask you a question? Oh, I thought uh, I was yes. supposed to ask a question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi. Yeah. J just one question. I mean, in your analysis, you show, for example, in the last uh, case where you uh, set the the last example in the strongly convex when you set that similarity, not similarity. Yeah. All yeah. the similarity is zero. Yeah. All those parameters are the Lipschitz constant and the, the strong convexity constant the local ones or the global one. Or, Oh, okay. It seems to be that they are the local ones, right? So it's the worst oh. case across all the functions, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, yeah, so we consider like worst case across all the functions. So, like, what we're all bounded by uh, the same Lipschitz constant, L. But, uh, because if you do that, you cannot really match the rate of the centralized system. So, you are unifying centralized and decentralized, but in the centralized case, the constants will be the rate will depend on the global functions, right? The, the constant of the global function, not the local ones. Uh, I mean, I mean, it, it depends. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. I, I think it's a great question. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, you could uh, improve like analysis. Did you change your analysis? I mean, your analysis is really dependent on this worst case, or is it just because you were not considering for simplicity the worst case, meaning the, the general one, meaning that is your analysis, can your analysis be adapted so, to, to target the, the dependence on the global constant or, or not? Okay, so, so I think up to some extent it uh, should be possible. Mm -hmm. However, uh, so, so, so because you, like, so instead of, so, so this is like, so, yeah, so, so here we assume what the like uh, Lipschitz constant is the same for different functions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, your average function could have actually a better Lipschitz constant, right? Yeah. Uh, an average of like these uh, local ones. Or, uh, and so, so in decentralized, uh, so if you have a decentralized topology, right? And if it's not mixing well, so if you're like P, like let's say uh, is close to uh, say zero, right? When you're like, or, or like if you do like a lot of local steps, right? You're actually optimizing local functions, right? That's why you have to have this. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but you're yeah, like you're right. But if you actually average at every step perfectly, right? When yeah. you're actually optimizing the global function and you can have global uh, Lipschitz average constant, and probably uh, so, so. So this is actually like this is a great question, and uh, we did not uh, analyze this case. We did not. Uh, take a look and uh, so so what like probably what is expected is uh, so it so so it should be some interplay of this parameter p and the uh, Lipschitz constants because if your p is bad you actually optimize just local functions so you should your conversion rate should depend on local uh, um, yeah or maybe also some dependence on the, the the degree of dissimilarity right maybe yeah, depending also, on how yeah, close yeah. they are yeah exactly exactly so, like yeah I yeah see. so i think it's a great question we did not analyze that and it's okay it's not for simplicity i think it's maybe it's not so obvious but okay. uh, yeah but yeah it's a great question to look thank at. you uh, thanks uh, yeah, so I don't see any other question in the chat, but maybe I would have like two quick questions. The first one is just a clarification. So the T in your rate uh, is number of like uh, this uh, rounds, uh, but when you have like when you, when you have tau, then it's like uh, 
no. um, of those tau sequences, right? No, uh, yeah, thanks for question. T, T divided by tau is number of rounds. So T okay. is uh, defined as, so we like number of gradient computations kind of, but not overall, but in parallel. <laughs> okay. okay, how to, okay. So, so basically T defined by this, uh, so T plus one, you increase it every time, even if you don't communicate. Oh, okay. It's kind of because you have like this, uh, uh, because you, you like your round could have like many communications actually uh, so we did not have these rounds uh, yeah yeah but okay so d divided by tau is number of rounds if you want uh, yeah thank you and then one other question so, so, so since you have this framework like very general uh then for instance, if you optimize communication could you do some kind of uh, important sampling on the graph so, so you kind of choose which nodes should communicate to, to kind of choose the optimal graph uh, to, to, to optimize convergence rates? Yeah, so this is this is also like very great question. Uh, so if you want to optimize your graph, so first like you can optimize for different things, uh, right? You can just look at average and you can look at, so this is like a, assumption is worst case average. So you, it, because it has to hold for all possible inputs you still have to uh, decrease, right? And you can, and this is basically the P spectral gap. And when you can like, like you can just optimize for the spectral gap of your matrix. So this would be like independent of data. And uh, yeah, there are some works uh, which do that. It's like, uh, you can use like some solver for that, uh, but it's non-convex problem, but yeah. And another thing that you could do as well, so you have like here, like your data, right? And you could optimize W to get like together with data kind of like to make like best mixing for your current data. But however, like if you do that, you need to know data of your neighbors and uh, this involves communications. So it's kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting question to look at. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, you, 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 there are also, I mean, people, there is also like this, uh, like line of work to find a very good topology. And one of the topologies which works well is the sequence of exponential graphs where you could uh, achieve perfect mixing in log n steps or something like that without too many uh, communications. Okay, I'm not sure if it answers your question. Uh, yeah, we don't. thank you. Okay, uh, great. Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, I will go to the next part. Okay, so uh, next uh, I wanted to discuss uh, in our paper, which uh, focused on uh, gradient tracking algorithm. And okay, so oh, and, and so this algorithm cannot be expressed. Uh, so it's also a different algorithm for this decentralized optimization, and it cannot be ex expressed in previous framework. And okay, so if we come back, okay, to previous rate, so it so this rate depends on this data heterogeneity term zeta, and uh, uh, so here we so so and, and like one of the key features of this algorithm, but it does not depend. Its convergence rate does not depend on this heterogeneity uh, term fun, like, zeta. Okay, so uh, let's look at this algorithm. What it does. Okay, so we define xi again as local models on every node i. And every node in this algorithm also stores one more vector uh, by i, which is uh, estimate of average gradient. So, so every node keeps track of uh, kind of in some way of this average gradient. And uh, how the algorithm looks like. So first, uh, every node performs uh, SGD step. But instead of using uh, current stochastic gradients, every node uh, uses a stochastic gradient, like a estimate of this averaged gradients. Kind of, so the hope is what this yi is debiased and it captures uh, perfectly the average of all the gradients, right? 
and then uh, so, so so like we like we use this instead of stochastic gradient. Okay, when like we update these models, and uh, they uh, perform uh, this like uh, decentralized averaging uh, on updated models. Uh, uh, so this is the step to, to update X. So it's similar as before, but uh, instead of stochastic gradients, we use this uh, estimate of uh, global gradient. And uh, now, uh, like next, uh, every node uh, uh, keeps track uh, of this uh, average uh, gradient Y. Uh, and how is this done? So first, all the old values uh, averaged within, like, with this decentralized uh, uh, topology. And second, uh, okay, so and now like new gradients are getting in incorporated, and uh, so and uh, so, okay, so so we add uh, so, like uh, new gradients uh, and uh, subtract old gradients, and kind of the idea for this like it, it, like it's kind of like reducing the bias, uh, and the idea is so if you always go to the right, you would subtract this direction going to the right. And you would get just uh, uh, unbiased, uh, uh, debiased gradient somehow. Um, okay, and and this is hopefully this is already captures well global direction. Uh, okay, so so this algorithm uh, is like was existing in the literature for some time. Uh, uh, you can see like some people introduced it uh, for uh, deterministic and stochastic optimization. Okay, and also. For now here, like for this part of the talk, we consider what ma mixing matrix W is fixed. It does not change uh, with time uh, as in this unified framework. Okay. Okay, now like, so, so if you want to like, so, so this algorithm uh, looks a bit similar, but different. And if we want to analyze it, um, so maybe we should uh, look for some similarities to previous uh, things. We again use matrix notation because it's convenient. And now um, we look at these uh, updates of X and Y, but or gamma Y, where gamma is the step size uh, as like before. And okay, so if we uh, write this in matrix notation, we can see uh, what we have like this uh, nice form where kind of this part is a bit similar to performing uh, decentralized average, averaging. Okay. And the uh, second part uh, is uh, somehow captures uh, SGD updates, but it's a bit different, but uh, we see some similarities. So we have like step size times gradients, uh, and here we have some averaging with some matrix. So yeah, so, some, sim like, some similarities if we look at this matrix notation. And uh, okay, if before we had this averaging with matrix W, and what was important, what we have this uh, so what it brings us closer uh, to the average. Now let's look at our averaging part from before and see, okay, if it's close, like if we come closer to this average uh, or not. Okay, so, so just like maybe you don't need to understand this, uh, just what's important to know is uh, what you can write it as equivalently as X, Y, like, like this original vector times some matrix and okay, the question is, so this is exactly equal. Uh, so the question is uh, if this one, uh, if we can bound this. And for that, this matrix J uh, has to be uh, contractive. Like it has, like its norm has to be smaller than one. And the problem with this gradient tracking is what actually for this matrix J, uh, it's not smaller than one and it actually can be bigger than one. Uh, so it's not a contractive operator. Okay, so what do we do? Like, like if we want to prove convergence. Okay, so we have this problem. However, if you if you like carefully look at this matrix J and uh, think about it, you can notice what after like, so if you do just one averaging with this matrix J, it's not enough, but there is exist constant tau, which is actually uh, depends on P. But after like tau, these steps of averaging with this matrix J, you can uh, ensure uh, con contraction properties and a pretty good one with like a constant half. And uh, so now uh, you can say, okay, 
instead of using just for one step, we would use uh, like similar proof technique as before uh, with this tau local steps, because after tau steps we have contraction. And okay, so this and uh, uh, so we are still okay. It's still not so easy, even if we use that. We are still like with stochastic term is still oh, stochastic term is still different. And uh, okay, also this because it's not even uh, it's not even equal to one. It can be uh, like this norm can be bigger than one. It also like imposes some difficulties. And uh, but using like this idea, you can analyze. Uh, so so we analyzed this gradient tracking algorithm, and we uh, managed to improve uh, conversions rate uh, of it. So here you can see previous conversions rate. And uh, so it doesn't depend on zeta, uh, by the way. OK, so this is also uh, sorry for that. But now conversions rates are written in different form. So now, so this is, uh, so what does this mean is what uh, this is number of iterations and epsilon is uh, your like function, like like uh, difference to the optimum of your function after this number of iterations. So this is kind of like reversed uh, previous uh, convergence rates. Uh, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so, so, so you see again, like here, like the first term with the stochastic noise term, uh, 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 divided by number of nodes, uh, like last term is this exponential term, and you have this middle term. And uh, so, so what we could do, uh, how can we improve? Could we improve it? Is uh, to replace one of this uh, p, which is a graph parameter, as you saw before, with a new parameter c. And uh, this parameter c is uh, also depends on eigenvalues of matrix uh, w. So, so you can compare it with p. Is pretty uh, similar. <laughs> However, like it's so, so it's always bigger than p uh, because uh, p is defined by second and last, and this one c is defined only by last one. So it's always bigger or equal than p. And also we see for many graphs uh, this constant. We see is actually a constant. So let's uh, let's. Uh, discuss with uh, on this slide so uh, okay so, so so here is just a reminder uh, of definitions so yeah for, for many graphs it's a constant uh, uh, like for example uh, if we use this uh, uh circle theorem when uh, like if every diagonal element is bigger than some value when we can bound C uh, also bigger, like when two times this value. Uh, and so, so if we look at uh, some popular graphs, or, or like for example, ring or torus, we, we can see what usually you uh, put un, like uniform weights. So, so we weight like one third, for example, for ring, we weight like one third is self weight and one third for edges. And uh, this way you can bound with uh, the diagonal element as one third, and your C is constantly bounded as two third, uh, like using this. Uh, okay, and the same for torus. So, so like this bound is so even if you increase your number of nodes uh, by like I don't know by much, the C does not uh, uh, change uh, much. So, so so it's still bounded by a constant. So like it does not depend on number of nodes. And so, so, so also, if you don't have regular graph, like one of the popular strategies to set the weights is this metropolis Hastings rule, where you also like, so your diagonal elements would be uh, bounded by maximum degree, like within your graph. So this way you also bound uh, this constant C. Okay, but of course, there are some graphs where C is not uh, bounded, uh, yeah. Okay, and uh, so if we compare to some our conversion rates of different algorithms, uh, so what we can, so here in red the uh, highlighted differences. So this DSGD is the one which we saw in the beginning, and it depends on this heterogeneity term zeta, uh, as we saw in the beginning. And otherwise, it's like it does not have like extra p nor extra p or extra c here. Uh, so gradient tracking. 
does not have this heterogeneity term, but it has extra C. And there is like another algorithm which is called disclare or exact diffusion. And uh, uh, this, um, so it has uh, this conversion rate, which does not depend on heter heterogeneity, does not depend on C, but it, it can be proved only uh, when C is constant. So uh, it's basically uh, like under this assumption, this C is also constant and it does not appear in the rate. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, so, so I think that, that's all what I wanted to uh, discuss today. Uh, so maybe as a summary, uh, so first we present, like you saw this unified framework, which unifies uh, many distributed algorithms uh, with some convergence rates. Uh, next, you saw this gradient tracking algorithm, which uh, does not depend on heterogeneity, and uh, like we improved these convergence rates. And uh, okay, so there are several uh, questions, uh, like several open questions. As we discussed already before, like with this different smoothness constants, uh, I think it's an interesting question. Uh, another question is, uh, is it possible to get, uh, so is it possible to, to allow for changing graphs, similar as in the first part, for this gradient tracking algorithm and uh, get this still improved conversions? Uh, it's not so trivial. And uh, okay, so and there are like overall in decentralized learning, there are many questions like like related uh, to how to make this uh, class of algorithms practical, like privacy, like maybe differential privacy, robustness to malicious uh, workers, fault tolerance, like to allow for asynchrony, uh, like to like allow for like, new nodes to come and uh, so on. Yeah, okay. So yeah, if, if there are some questions, I, I would be happy to answer. Uh, yeah, so, and, and these are like papers uh, where, like, on, on which uh, this talk was based on. Okay. Thank you, Anastasia, for this excellent talk. I think we have still something around like eight minutes for questions. So if you do have some questions, please feel free to either raise your hand or post your questions in the chat. So maybe I would start with with few. So this uh, gradient tracking, it seems to me, I mean, it looks like like some variance reduction. And in yeah, the, yeah. And so so in the previous uh, yeah, so in the previous part you had Fed averaging as a special case. I was wondering whether like in this one, can you actually recover like uh, like centralized algorithms like uh, MIME or Scaffold as a special case here? Yeah, so this is like a great question. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you uh, use a fully connected graph or like you alternate, uh, yeah, between like these local steps, like fully connected and uh, disconnected graph. So uh, you can, uh, yeah, you, 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 so what you recover is uh, not exactly scaffold, but something very similar. So you would, uh, so, in scaffold, it's basically your, um, so, so in scaffold, you have this control variance, right? Which uh, like, which initialized uh, on previous iterations here, your control variance would be initialized as a first uh, stochastic gradient. Uh, Actually, yeah, could you please comment uh, if there is like a direct comparison, how the rate compares, like which one is better actually? Ah, how the rate compares. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, I don't know by heart this rate of uh, scaffold. And uh, so, so, so from what I uh, could, uh, uh, so, so what I like remember, I think like the rate of gradient tracking should be worse than rate of scaffold. Just like in terms of his stochasticity, dependent dependence on stochasticity, but yeah, I don't uh, remember exactly uh, actually uh, because I think uh, yeah yeah I think it's a great question. Uh, uh. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, yeah, so if there are any other questions, please or comments, please just raise your hand and then I'll try to unmute you or just post a question to chat.
maybe let's wait 30 more seconds. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah, so maybe, uh, okay, so sorry, <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, uh, so so in scaffold, there is like no, 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 this middle term, so it's like uh, better in terms of that. Uh, also scaffold like allows for different like local and global steps, and uh, here we don't have that. Like in gradient tracking is just one step size. Uh, so, so basically different step size on local steps and global steps. So, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I guess in, uh, if, if I remember correctly, it's like uh, in theory, you don't really improve by having like a larger step, like large global step size than, than one. I mean, it's always kind of cancels out with, with the local one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. Kind of. Yes. Yeah, I thought there could be like difference like uh, for local HD. It, it could be like for like this uh, sigma term, it could be somehow a bit uh, beneficial, but yeah, to have like this different uh, local global steps, yeah. Yeah, so it seems that there are no other questions. So, so thank you, Anastasia, again for, for your great and very clear talk. Thank you, and thanks everybody for showing up today. Yeah, see you at the next seminar. So thank you again. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Thanks.